straight to short turn man. Mohamed Sami takes the catch. Mohamed Amir gets a wicket. First wicket for Amir in the innings. So Brad had it not lasting too long. Straight at 191 for 6. It's a terrible position, uh, particularly someone with uh, the ability of Brad had. Coming with just a handful of balls to face. Absolutely no choice. On that occasion, well taken catch off the thick edge. We know this guy can bat to Mitchell Johnson in at 8, so no risk fight for the Pakistani. The last three overs have gone for 29 runs. So very much uh, the kind of run rate that Australia maintained right through the innings. But Pakistan would feel that they have really gone berserk in the last three, four overs. Mohamed Amir. Like the final over of the innings. Bowling. Great delivery. First ball duck for Mitchell Johnson. The typical Pakistani Yoka. Australia 191 to 7. Well, Amir doing his best to keep Australia under 200. Two deliveries, two wickets, so he's on a hat trick. Really does need to produce a couple more dot balls if they're not going to be chasing 200. That was a beauty. Also about being prepared for a Yorker as a batsman, I think uh, Mitchell Johnson there not at all prepared for that kind of a Yorker, just the way he was winding up to play that first delivery. Stephen Smith is the new man in, Mohamed Sami is on a hat-trick, I wonder whether Pakistan realises that. Mohamed Amir on a hat-trick. Got a good Yorker, this man. Just offline on that occasion, they come for a bye. And he's been run out. So three wickets so far in the three balls of this final over. Mike Nassi as well, returning. 17 Australia, 191 for 8. Well, that's class as a team hat trick. Oh, it doesn't get it, but the team does. Good, accurate work there from uh, Cameron Akmal with the gloves. The plan was to get Mike Hussey on strike, no matter what. Three wickets in the last over. An opportunity here. Sean Tate is not the greatest batsman around. So that means that Derek Nannis is not that good. They could bowl them out. Dirk Nanis, right hand bat, Mohamed Amir. Sure, looking for another Yorker here. There it comes, missing the stumps. Are we watching an action replay or did that happen again? It's unbelievable, we've seen four wickets in the last four balls. What do you call that? Well, it's called a double hat trick when the bowler does it. But, uh, it's the team combining here for yep, a double hat trick. Four on the trot. So, Australia have not scored a run in the last over and they've lost four wickets doing it. And that's going to bring Sean Tate on strike. So it could be five and five. Tate is not the greatest batsman going around. Stephen Smith gone for zero, straight at 191 for nine. It's quite bizarre what's happened out there. But Australia, I think, uh, got the target they have in mind. They've well passed 175, 180, which is what they would have expected at the start of the innings. They'll be a little embarrassed with the way they've gone in the final over of the innings. Some credit due to Kamran Akmal as well. Two direct hits for him. Of course, Mohamed Amir for getting the ball in the right place. Now, 
I must confess I've never seen this before. Four wickets in four balls. Two wickets to Mohamed Sami, two run outs. And now <laughs> they won't be thinking of running for a bye on that one. So far it's lining up to be a four wicket maiden. Amazing. Yeah, the over started off when Australia were four down, wasn't it? Five down. Five down. Not a run has been scored and they've just got one wicket left. And gone! It's bowled him. Can you believe that? At this time, the wicket belongs to Mohamed Amin. So we've seen five wickets fall in the final over of the innings. Not a run has been scored. Look at that at the bottom there. When is the last time you've seen something like that? Well, there we go. A five wicket maiden. I, I think I've heard of a double wicket maiden. 